Hey, what's up everybody? So we're kind of deviating from the vlog format today to cover a very important topic here, and that's avoiding scaling mistakes in 3D printing while you 3D model in your CAD software. And I've come up with a little bit of a workflow for myself, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, describe that here for you today. So someone had commented in my previous vlog about scaling issues, and while you're in the trenches of 3D modeling and you're kind of in that creative workflow process, you don't realize sometimes the scale of certain objects because you're zoomed in and you know it looks great in 3D, but when you zoom back out or after you 3D print it, you realize, hey, this thing is not the scale I needed it to be. And a perfect example of that is the Sith throne that I 3D modeled. By the way, this black one, by the way, it's a throne for your phone on my Maker World for free, links in the description. When I was 3D modeling this, I first started out 3D modeling the actual throne design, which was this one here. So this is the actual throne design, designed by Ralph McCreary, and um, I wanted to put my phone on there. So to be able to get correct scaling, I obviously modeled the size of my phone. And so this is just a 3D representation of the size of my phone. And I thought to myself, hey, this would work out just fine, but it really doesn't feel like it's strong enough. It might fall over. It just doesn't look beefy enough to be able to carry a phone. So then I decided to make something a little larger where it can kind of play with perspective where this is wider and thicker and larger while maintaining the overall width here. So a couple of things I want to mention about scaling is when I first 3D printed the left and right side of these spikes, I noticed that these were just way too flimsy. So I went ahead and I thickened them out just a little bit so that it'll have a little bit more durability. And you don't notice that when you're 3D modeling that, hey, this is actually really thin. And um, you know you think it looks fine in 3D, but then when you go and print it out in real life, it's actually pretty flimsy. And yeah, here's a good example of how flimsy this was. And then I went in and I made it so it's uh, thicker after realizing that. And for the longest time, before I figured out better ways of checking scale, I was using <laughs> this part of the spike here. I just cut it out and I had it as a thickness reference. And so I was avoiding making something too thin by going, okay, at least if I have it this thick, um, I know that it will be substantial enough. Likewise, another scaling kind of uh, topic I had, which may be helpful to know, is that the width of these spikes were already wide enough. I thought to myself, hey, this is gonna be wide enough on someone's desk. If I make it bigger, it's just gonna get wider. But no, I actually kept it the same width. So if you look here, I have my ruler, my uh, tape measure rather, and it's at about 9.7 inches, and it's the same for here maybe about a 9.8. So I more or less kept the same width of it, but just kind of increased the size of this and made it beefier so that when you put your phone on there, it's definitely stronger. So you can definitely play with scale, but the main topic of this is how do I know that what I'm 3D modeling in the CAD software is gonna be the right size? And so you always wanna keep so what I do is I always keep some calipers, some digital calipers and a digital tape measure for that matter next to me at my uh, desk. So when I'm 3D modeling, I always have access to it. And this is just the um, 16 foot Alloy Man digital tape. And I needed a digital tape because I'll be completely honest, I have a hard time reading um, these analog measurements over here. So as you pull it out, it tells you the inches. You can even switch it over to any unit you need. Millimeters is usually what I'm working in. And it's extremely helpful as you work. You can model something out. Let's say you're in the flow of modeling and you're not using any measurements. You're kind of freehanding it. Then you can stop for a minute and go, hey, you know what? Let me take a measurement. So for example, we're here in Maya and whatever CAD software you're working in, just make sure you're in the right units. And so for here, it's centimeters. We're gonna go to millimeters because that's what I usually like to work in. And when I create a cube here, just a regular primitive, we can also go to create polygon primitives and cube. And when I create a cube, I have my world measurements here and then I have my objects measurements here. So universally, I can scale this up 10 which I'll explain why I always scale up to 10 and how I came to that conclusion a little bit later on in this video. And that's only for Maya specifically, so you don't need to kind of take that into account if you're using a different, if you're using a different software. But 
over here is where we can manipulate the object's size. So right now we're at one millimeter. This in real world is considered one millimeter. So if I need to work at a 1.75 millimeter, you know, everything you're creating is based off of a real world measurement. And before I started getting into building out physical products for real world use cases, um, and I was just working in VFX, I never really paid attention to making it fit in real world scale. I just kind of modeled it so it looked right. But when I got into uh, making products for real world use cases, I definitely incorporated referencing back to real world measurements every single step of the way as I was creating my model. And let's say I did get into a flow state and I would say, you know, like, hey, you know, this cube would be really awesome if there was another cube here. And I kind of just w went in and I freehanded it. I, I brought it in here and I, you know, let's, let's just pretend that I'm modeling something really complex here. And I go, hey, you know what? This is so cool. Let me just bring this in like that. And that'll be really awesome. And I'll just kind of extend that out like that. And whoa, you know, super cool looking model, you know, you know, we're pretending here. But um, I'm sure uh, CAD softwares out there have a measuring tool. In Maya, we have measure tools here and I use the distance tool. So I go in and I, you know, uh, left mouse button click and then I left mouse button click while holding shift so that they're uh, perfectly on a straight line. And then um, it creates these locators here. I'm gonna turn off my grid for a second. And it creates these locators here where I can kind of vertex snap it and I can see for myself, hey, this is 0 0.637 millimeters. But again, so I personally in my software, I don't think you have to do this in other softwares, but in my scale, I have to divide this by 10 because it doesn't take into account the uh, real world measurements that we have to multiply by 10. I have to bring in my calculator and I have 0. 637 divided by 10 and in reality that's tiny it's 0 0.0637 millimeters so it's not even a one millimeter so you know then i can kind of say to myself wow this is way too small i got to now adjust because if you look at this this is just 1.75 millimeters and when you go out into the real world you got your trusty calipers out here and you can just quickly open this up and go hey you know what what's 1.75 all right that's about 1.75 that's pretty great but let's see how big uh 0 0.06 is oh man that's way too tiny and since we have our uh, thickness tests here we can go in and we can see hey what's the smallest my 3d printer can print and that's a 0 0.3 millimeter so definitely we cannot do that 0 0.06 millimeter like that measuring tool you can kind of gauge also how big it is out in the real world so if you use that measuring tool and you saw that it was x amount of millimeters you can come out here and go hey let's say it was 10 millimeters you go hey 10 millimeters is plenty or let's say it's really small hey two and a half millimeters looks like that is that actually thick enough for me to grasp. And when you're in your CAD software, you're most likely 3D modeling based off of measurements. And so like that measuring cube, you always have some digital reference. But out here in the real world, when you print it out, you may never know how it's gonna turn out. So what I did here, and I'm gonna make this available on my Maker World too, it's not on there just yet. And um, there are some great things to notice about this test here. So I started out with 0.1 millimeters and went to 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 but as you can tell there is no 0 0.1 on here and the reason is that we're working with 0 0.4 millimeter nozzles on our 3d printers and they could only go so small below 0 0.4 and in this case it's a 0 0.3 millimeter that it can go down to so it has a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle but can only go down to 0 0.3. When I put 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 on here, the cards that I made, it wasn't able to 3D print it, it was blue. Um, after I sliced it, those two pieces were blue, which indicated that it's too small to be able to print. I do intend on getting a smaller nozzle in the future to be able to print more fine details, and maybe we can do the same test with that smaller nozzle. But nonetheless, let's get this off the build plate, and let me show you what we're working with. All right, guys, so I pretty much got this thickness test pulled off the build plate. A couple of the smaller ones ripped off, because I do have some PETG left there from when I printed out some of the uh, test prints for the Stealth TV tray, and it decided it just wants to stay there, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, because it's not coming out. But nonetheless, that's a thing we could figure out at a different time. Here starting from 0 0.3, and this is the <laughs> thinnest one that was printed, funny enough, all right on that, and it um, had a really hard time coming off. And then a 0 0.4, and this way, having these 
little cards here will give us the ability to know, hey, if I print it out at 0.3 millimeters, it's going to be this flimsy. And unless you're making some sort of a, a card you can give away, um, let's say a business card, 0.5 would probably be better for that just so it holds up and doesn't doesn't break. By the way, it also matters what sort of material you're printing with. So these blue cards that I have are being printed out in blue PETG. So you know they're going to be a little bit more flexible, although they're going to be a little bit more durable as well and heat resistant. They are going to definitely be more flexible than PLA. So that's something else to keep in mind as you're going through the designing process. As mentioned before, I got 0.3 all the way to 1, and it's going by 0.1 increments. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. And each one is the thickness of that measurement that you see on the card. So this is a 1 millimeter thickness, and you can kind of go through and see the rest. From there, we go in increments of 0.25. So we have 1.25 millimeters, 1.5, 1.75, and 2. And likewise, as you're designing, you can go, hey, on the 3D printer in real world, it's going to be about this thick. And uh, if I go 1.25, it may be too thin for what I need it for. So I'll go with a 2 millimeter instead. Um, when I'm designing, I can kind of have a visual representation of how it'll turn out on the 3D printer once it's done. Likewise, we got it from 2 all the way up to 2.25, 2.5, 2.75, and 3. And then I said, you know what, let me just go one millimeter more. So we got 3.25, 3.75, 3.5, and 4. And by that point, we got some pretty hefty prints. So this is going to be put up on my Maker World for you guys to be able to download and print. And it's just something very helpful to have around. So that's why it's always helpful to have these sorts of tools. And we can always cross-reference uh, kind of like Hey, are the calipers calibrated? Is my 3D printer accurate? So this is a four millimeter uh, card here. And if I go ahead and measure it, it comes out as four millimeters. So that's pretty accurate if you ask me. Let's go all the way down to 0.3. Let's see how that'll read it. This is reading it at about a 0.41. But nonetheless, it's pretty accurate. And when we're dealing with such small scale there, this is reading at a 0.45. And I don't blame uh, this being at a 0.41 because we got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We got a 0.5 millimeter card and it's reading it at a 0.62. When does it start reading accurately? And this is at a 0.6 and we got a 0.6 millimeter there. We got a 0.8 on 0.7 millimeter card. With the uh, four millimeter card, it read it just fine. Now we're getting to 0.9 millimeters and it's at a one millimeter reading on the calipers. So, but as I go up, now we're at one millimeter and it's finally reading it as one millimeter. So this is a 1.25, we're getting a 1.22. Here's a 1.5, this is coming out as 1.65. We have a 1.75, this is coming out as 1.8. Pretty close. And again, if you're talking off by 0.5 look how tiny that is it's just a small little bit so there's going to be some deviation that does occur this is two and it's a very accurate at two there we got a 2.25 which is a 2.2 over here yeah so we get maybe plus minus one millimeter which is totally fine it's 2.5 2.57 i got it to a 2.55 so it's off by 0 0.05 which is so negligible this is a 2.75 reading at 2.8 and we got a three reading at three it's just a three and we got a 3.25 reading at 3.2 then we got then we got a 3.75 reading at 3.74 and last but not least 3.5 reading at 3.56 so it's just curious to know what your deviations are and now that you have have these cards and your calipers and you can kind of see what your deviations are and kind of plan accordingly but I never really took that into account and it's been you know working out pretty fine for me and I got this off of Maker World having these tolerance tests also helps because when you're building something out you definitely want to keep tolerance in mind and I always seem to remember after I, you know, finish modeling a part, I go, oh, wait, you know what? I, I forgot to put in the tolerance. And this has been super helpful for me to kind of see what kind of shape I'm using, whether it's like a hexagonal complex shape or a square or, you know, a cylinder. It really helps to know what my printer can do. And I, in fact, I used this to get the tolerance for this here. And um, I used a 0.15 and that comes out real easy with no trouble whatsoever. And um, that's the same with this here. So it's great to just keep all that in mind. So to kind of wrap up 
how I would go about keeping scale in mind. There's one important part that I forgot to mention is that experience is a really big thing. So in the beginning, kind of going back into the real world or you know, using reference measurements in the computer uh, kind of can feel unnatural. But as you work, it starts to feel a lot more natural. So while I'm working on the computer, I'll quickly pick up my calipers and just open it up and check the measurements really quick. And I can see in real life about how big that piece is going to be. And although you know how big the piece is going to be, you don't know how it's going to turn out in a 3D print. But with these, you can kind of gauge now. There is a piece in the Stealth TV tray I was making yesterday. It was actually for the locking mechanism for this uh, drawer. And I made it to be one millimeter thick. And that was too thick. Uh, there was this little speed bump that I created. And that was going to definitely be too thick for my needs. So I went ahead and I did a 0.5. And without having run these tests, I wouldn't have known if I maybe did a 0.1 or a 0.2 it wouldn't have worked. So now I know, especially with these Bamboo Lab printers, because this is what I ended up doing the tests on, the Bamboo Lab A1 rather, is that I can't go below 0.3. Anything below 0.3 just won't really show up in the 3D print. But I know that a 0.5 millimeter would definitely show up. So when I created that speed bump yesterday, I know that this will definitely show up in the print. But to continue here, if I got bigger, uh, objects that I need to find references to. I end up using my digital tape measure and having this as a reference, especially if you don't have the experience built up yet and you've seen what prints and what doesn't print, having these will definitely help bring up that experience for you right away. And this is a, again, an idea I had a long time ago. I wish I actually started this a lot sooner. I feel like a lot of trial and error that I went through, um, over the years would have been sped up if I had these and just kind of spent the time to finally do it. So shout out of sorts to Lifehold Strategic for asking that great question yesterday that finally kind of pushed me to do this thing that I always wanted to do. And I'm going to make it available on my maker world. I just got to take some pictures and throw it up on there. I'll let you guys know when it's there. But hopefully that helped you guys out with the uh, scaling and thickness and kind of seeing how something from 3D translates over into the physical world when 3D printing. And one other thing I want to mention is when I was first starting out 3D printing, one of the first things that I made was this little door stopper, which looks like I got to re-3D print it because it broke. It's made of PLA. But I had 3D modeled it and it always would come out really small. So I remember on my Monoprice Mini Delta V2 that I was wondering what you know what's going on why is this printing out smaller than what i have measured out in my maya software and that's when i went ahead and i made a one inch cube in maya and i printed it out on the monoprice mini delta v2 and i got out my calipers and i measured it and it was 10 times too small and that's when i realized that everything that i do in maya needs to be 10 times larger so when i go in and I make a one inch cube, before I apply that one inch measurement to the cube, I actually scale it by 10, then I add that one inch measurement in its actual real world scale. So definitely scaling can be an issue, especially in the beginning. But once you get the hang of it, once you build up that muscle, that kind of recognition muscle, if you will, then it kind of just seamlessly goes along in your workflow. But nonetheless, guys, that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, keep an eye out for this thickness test on my Maker World. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.